Well, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go across, uh, through all the plants, but one thing that I want to do is that the plants, this is a, uh, this is a practice contest. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you some pointers on how to identify them, and then I'll give you the, the uh, name of the plant, okay? Now, a couple of things. So first of all, um, there's 43 plants today. So I'm pretty sure, hopefully you guys caught on to that. There's supposed to be 50. We didn't have 50 plant samples, so we gave you, uh, that means there were seven plants missing. So we gave you 14 points for that. So if you didn't know any of the plants, you still got 14 points. Okay, now. Um, so when you do plants, uh, a, a couple pointers about how to, how to identify them. The first thing is that uh, the plant list. How, how are we doing on time? We're fine. Okay. Yeah. The first thing is that <clears throat> there's, there's something like 75 plants on the list. Well, you can categorize them. Okay. So if you can identify or tell the difference between um, conifer and deciduous, then that's going to help you a lot because as soon as you pick something like this up, you know that it's a conifer, so that eliminates half the plants on the list. So by process of elimination, you can, um, you can start crossing things off and you can identify the plant easier. But one thing about plants is that you, the, the way to do it is find an identifying feature about that particular plant and that will help you um, remember what it is. And sometimes you can even do you can even do a little uh, rhyme that will help you remember it. Okay, so um, I don't want to stay in here with you guys for an hour. I'm going to do this fairly quickly. Uh, Gormley is going to videotape this, and so I will, if if it if it comes out a decent video, I'll post it on um, I'll post it on YouTube, and you can type in California FFA Forestry ID, and then if it's a good video, hopefully that'll help you. Okay, so here we go. Number one, uh, identifying feature is that it's fuzzy. So it's flannel bush, fuzzy flannel, number one. Number two, uh, identifying feature, first of all, it's a conifer. Uh, if you pick it up, smell your hands, smell the thing, it is absolutely rank. In fact, if you get one out in the woods, uh, it, it smells just like cat pee. This is California juniper. Most of the time, or sometimes there'll be a berry with it. If it's a berry, it'll be a juniper. If it's a cone, then it's gonna be the other one, which is cypress. Anyway, this smells like cat pee. And uh, so that's a juniper. Here we go. Number three. If you got this one, then you're amazing because this is a stick. Davis is the contest of sticks. Well, the reason why we put this out because it does have these caterpillars that are forming. And hopefully you saw these little caterpillars. These are catkins that will develop. It also has um, this uh, uh, light-colored slippery bark. It's a paper birch. Did anybody get paper birch? A couple people? Good. Okay, number four. Uh, we got a couple of samples here. We got these big old buds coming off. Uh, we got this big, thick stem. It's light-colored. The identifying feature of this one is that the leaf is palmate compound. So it has five leaflets that would radiate from this spot, palmate compound, it is a buckeye. Also, there is kind of a buckeye ball right here. It's hollowed out from some type of insect. Okay, that's number four. Number five, oh, the identifying feature is that there's almost, if, you, if you're the first person, you're not gonna see this, but if you're come midway, you always see this leaf. What is it? Bent. It's bent, oh, bent leaf bay laurel. Why is it bent? Because it smells good. Wait, yeah, it's bent because it smells good. So somebody came up to here, they bent the leaf and smelled it, and you can smell a really nice peppery odor to it. Sometimes you just take your hand like this, smell your hand, it smells peppery. Anyway, bent leaf, bay laurel. Number six, uh, identifying feature on number six is red bark. What's red bark? Manzanita. manzanita. Number six, manzanita. Number seven, identifying feature of this is that it has rigid, the stems are really rigid. It also has little, uh, little bitty leaves, and most of the time they're pretty green. This particular um, variety, they're kind of dullish green, getting ready to bloom. Uh, this is buckbrush. Rigid stems, they're usually light colored. Number eight, 
Uh, the identifying feature of number eight doesn't have the leaves yet. If it had the leaves, the leaves would be long and slender and pointed, uh, but they're not. You've got the, the, these are buds coming off here, and these, uh, these little buds here are willow buds, and they're pretty identifiable. The bark is also uh, usually very smooth. That's willow. Number nine, uh, identifying feature on number nine is that the leaf, if you take the leaf in your finger like this and you hold it like this, it looks like a clamshell. So the clamshell leaf is a mountain mahogany. I don't know how you get clamshells with mountain mahogany, but the mountain mahogany looks like a clamshell. Number 10, there are three live oaks. The way you identify a live oak is number one is it looks like deciduous, but the leaves are live. Okay, so in the wintertime, they still have their leaves. They're live, so uh, it's a live oak. There are three live oaks. All three of them are right here. The first one is green on top, and if you turn it over, and by the way, when you're looking for identifying features, always turn these things over. See, look how different it is when you turn it over. So if you only looked at it on one side, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. But if you turned it over, it's clearly different. So it's green on top, and it's silver on the bottom. That makes it canyon, uh, canyon live oak. Right? Did I say that right? Okay, number 11, also live oak, clearly a, a wooden thing. The leaves are live. They're green. Okay, this one, this particular live oak, is green on top. Turn it over. And they're still green. Different color green, but they're still green. So green on top, green on bottom, that's interior live oak. And the, and the third one, number 12, the third live oak, uh, this one is pretty cool. They, the leaves are cupped. See how they're cupped? Like a boat. They float on the ocean. They float on the coast, so it's coastal live oak. Okay? Cupped like a boat, floats, boat, ocean. Uh, coastal live oak. All right, number 13. Uh, number 13 in the spring will always have these really cool bright colored flowers. Um, uh, it's always, the leaf edge is angry. And this one is a more mild variety, but the leaf edge being angry, that means it's sharp. It's angry Oregon grape. Oregon grape, angry Oregon. Okay. Number 14, uh, the identifying feature on number 14 is these thorns. These thorns are needle-like. Okay, so current has needle-like thorns. So this one is current. This particular, there's two varieties here. This is golden current. Golden current does not actually have the needles, but almost all currents do. This other variety has the needle-like thorns. So the needle thorns should have been the giveaway. That's a gooseberry. Current or gooseberry. Yeah, thanks. You bet. Ribes is the... Um, genus. Okay, number 15. Uh, okay, so we have a conifer here, so you can eliminate all of the deciduous things. Uh, it has long needles, so we know we have a pine. The first thing you do when you do pine trees is you count the needles. No, not every needle in the bundle. You count the needles in individual bundles. So if you pluck them off like this and you start counting them, there's some twos, there's some threes. Here's three, two, 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 and you start counting them like this. It has twos and threes. So there's two in a bundle and three in a bundle. So when that happens, when you see that, it's one of two pines. It's either a knob cone or a Monterey. Monterey pine is very common with two needles. Well, there's lots of two needles on here. Also, the cone is open and the scales are smooth. It's a Monterey pine. If it was a knob cone, uh, which we have over here, uh, nine times out of ten, the knob cone scales will be closed. So that's Monterey pine. Next one uh, has unique individual scales. It's a conifer. Um, my students commonly say that these look like little dragon scales. Anyway, so uh, that is a sequoia, giant sequoia. Okay, number 17. Uh, this one... Uh, if you, the bark a lot of times, or yeah, the bark is oftentimes kind of reddish. The uh, leaf on top is an olive or um, olive tree color. Uh, it's kind of, it looks kind of like an olive leaf, um, maybe the color. But the leaves themselves are also, if you look underneath, 
the, the secondary veins are shaped like parking lots, which is a typical feature of this. It's coffee berry or a roundness. Uh, number 18, uh, let's see. These, the identifying feature are these seed pods, these bronze colored seed pods. Yes, it's a stick, there's no leaves on it yet, but these seed pods are real typical of this uh, plant or shrub. Um, if you look really close, there's these little tiny uh, reddish buds getting ready to come out. It's a red bud. Also, a weird thing about red bud, even if these, like sometimes you'll get a sample where the seed pods are gone, but you see these little tiny sticks that poke out right there? That's real typical of red bud. There's another one right there. For some reason, red bud does that. So if, you, if there were no flowers, no leaves, or no um, seed pods, you'd see these little sticks poking out. That's red bud. Number 19, if you take number 19 and you feel it, especially in the spring, we're not springtime yet, these will be really sticky. Um, this one is pretty sticky. Where am I going with this? <coughs> sticky monkey flower. Sticky leaves, called sticky monkey flower. This sample, they're not very sticky because it's not quite springtime, it's old leaves. Um, but if you look closely, the leaves are uh, long, they're kind of fleshy, sticky monkey flower. Here we go, moving on to number 20. Number 20 is really, really cool. It's really, really gnarly, and it's really, really aggressive. You might be too close. Maybe back up a little bit. I'm not a camera guy, I'm just holding the phone. Back up just a tad, you're kind of intimidating me. Anyway, so this is a really cool cone. It's got these huge looking uh, uh, claws on it. Uh, so some of you might think, oh, well, that's a gray pine. But, a, but it's not a gray pine because a couple things. Number one, it's a very, very tan color, very tannish color. And then oftentimes this particular species has these little chunks of pitch on the teeth. This is the culture pine. And then if you look at the needles, the needles are really, really thick and extraordinarily long. They're the longest needles there is, typically of the pines, up to 12 inches. So that's the culture pine. Culture pine is a Southern California thing, typically. It is the, it is the great pine of Southern California. Number 21. Um, you can identify this from 10 miles away because it's the one... Let me back up a little bit, Gorman. You just got closer to me. Huh? Sorry. Okay, anyway. So you see how it's wilted? The first thing this plant does when you take off a snip is the leaves start to wilt. And you can see it's wilted. There are really only two plants on the list that wilt like this. The first one is this one, the other one is the, is the um, buckeye. So, but this one's clearly not buckeye. Um, I know you guys can't do this, but if you take this and you do this to the stem, it's real pithy and you can squeeze it, meaning that it's kind of hollow. And if you, even if you squeeze it here without breaking it, it's hollow. Okay, so, and then if you take a look at the green part, you can squeeze the green part. They're also kind of hollow. That's an elderberry. And by the way, the inside stuff is the pith, and that's what the valley elderberry beetle eats. Okay, number 22, identifying feature of this. It is an evergreen shrub, and it has these little very green leaves. That is coyote bush. Number 23, okay, hopefully we should all know... Uh, this one because it's in every town, in, in every parking lot. It grows on the coast. Uh, it has needles, short needles like a fir, but it's clearly not a fir. Okay, so uh, one side of it is green, and then always flip these things over, folks. It's really important. Green on this side, flip it over, look at it very closely. At first it looks green, but if you look at each individual needle very closely, it has silver on it. The silver is a stomata bloom, which is responsible for transpiration. So the silver color on the bottom, the green on top, that makes it redwood. If it was green on bottom and green on top, what would it be? It would be a yew wood. But it's not green on the bottom. Okay, number 24. You're welcome for having some leaves on this one. Last year, this sample, I think, was a stick. And everybody got it wrong except for like three people. Okay, so the leaves are real simple. It's an oak leaf. They're deeply lobed. So lobed, deeply lobed, like valleys. So it's valley oak. That's number 24. Number, oops, excuse me. Number 25. This one, this, the foliage is soft. 
and it's silver. Uh, also, in about two to three weeks, this right here is going to be a really cool flower. There's a bud coming out right here. It's going to be a cool blue flower, so like at Chico, you might see this blooming. Uh, anyway, soft, silvery foliage. It is um, bush lupin. Okay, this one uh, is pretty uh, obnoxious, but if you ever had a rose garden, or if you were ever exposed to a rose out in the yard playing when you're a little kid, and you rolled, your, you fell into the rose bush, you learn this real fast. So this is a wild rose. It also has thorns. It's different than the current because the thorns are shaped like a shark fin. So if you look at this closely, dun 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 dun, dun you know, like Jaws, shark fin. Okay, so that's a wild rose. Uh, and then number 27, you're welcome for having the fruit on this one. We thought about doing a stick on you, but that's really mean, so we left the fruit on here. Uh, this this the sycamore ball. So if you have a sycamore tree in your yard or out in front of the school, and you throw these sycamore balls at each other, everybody does that. They fall apart like this. Anyway, a sycamore. Uh, the leaf, these are going to be the leaves. When they come out, they're shaped like a dinosaur foot. Number 28 uh, is also an oak. It's an oak leaf. But these, are not, these, these leaves are not deeply lobed. They're slightly lobed. So slightly lobed is a blue oak. These are last year's leaves. If they were this year's leaves, they would be a bluish green color. So that's blue oak. Number 29, again, we have a stick. However, you're welcome for having the fruit here. And what is this? It's a walnut. Everybody knows what a walnut is. So clearly, hopefully everybody got this one. That's the black walnut. When you see it at um, the state finals, it'll have leaves. Number 30, uh, again, we've got the fruit on there for you. These little bitty cones are really cool. There's only uh, two plants that have these cones. It's either a red alder or a white alder. Um, and at this point, I would have no idea how to tell the difference. It's a 50-50 shot for you. But uh, this one happens to be a white alder. If you saw the leaves, white alder leaves are finely toothed or more finely toothed. Red alder leaves are coarsely toothed. And curls under, yes. Number 31. Uh, this one, the, the leaf uh, is uniformly toothed. And so oftentimes we call this toothy toyon. It's toothed on both sides, real identifiable. Uh, many times it'll have red berries. But you don't need the red berries to identify it. It's an evergreen shrub, always has the leaves, toothy toyon, toyon berry, okay? Number 32, this one is really cool. You just need to memorize this in your brain, the shape of this cone and how it opens up, fans out, and uh, is not a, it's not a toothed scale. It's a western white pine. And uh, please don't take the western white cone. You can have plant samples, but don't take my cones, okay? All right, number 32. 32 is really cool because if you take a leaf like this and you go like this with your thumb and look at your thumb, it has this soft um, baby powder-like substance. It's kind of weird and it's really soft and if you go like this, especially um, spring uh, leaves, uh, you get this, this golden color in your fingers and it's really, really soft. It's like baby powder. Anyway, um, on top, the leaves are green turn them over, they're a golden color, and that golden stuff is the fuzzy, powdery stuff. It's golden chinkapin. Number 34, okay, so uh, this is a pine. For, what do you do when we do pines? We count the, needle, the, the needles. So all of these are three. There's no twos. They're all three. They're all threes. Okay, so the other thing about this variety is that the needles... When compared to other pines, the needles are kind of heavy and kind of thick. It's also very green. Okay, then if you take a look at the bud, the bud is also a really good thing to look at. And on this particular uh, variety or species, the bud looks like, uh, like a mosque steeple or a missile. So that is a ponderosa pine. Also the cone, we have a cone here. Co the cones, uh, the teeth on each scale, the teeth point outward when they open up. So when you hold it like this, it's really, really prickly. And so some people will say prickly ponderosa. This is a very small cone. Uh, it matured early. Most of the time we're gonna get cones a little bit bigger, 
But also notice how the cone is kind of bent. So it goes kind of like this. If it was a Jeffrey pine, the cone would go straight and it would be symmetrical. So that's ponderosa pine. Okay. Um, okay, now we've got, so we still have a conifer. We have needles, but it's not a pine. Um, if you take your hand like this, you notice that the needles are really soft. Go like this, they're soft. Well, that is a very identifying feature of Douglas fir. So number 35 is Douglas fir. Number 36, uh, it, has, it has flat scales. There are, three, there are three species that have flat scales. They are the cedars. There are three types of cedars. If you look closely at this, and if you look at each individual scale, you see these little X's. The X's are the stomata in the, in the, um, on the scale. Okay, so look closely, and this, this one has really cool X's. Look on both sides of it. So the one that has X's is um, um, Port Orford. Western Red will also have the X's sometimes, but they're not as consistent as Port Orford, and sometimes the X's look like what some people call butterflies. Typically, Port Orford, will, the scales will also be a little bit smaller than Western Red. So this is Port Orford. Number 37, uh, this is another very identifying cone. You saw all these when you went camping when you were a kid, and you probably collected them. Big, large, long cone. It is a five-needle pine, that's sugar pine. Number 38, also, uh, this has scales, flat scales, so we know it's one of the cedars. We look at it closely, we don't see X's. What we see is segmented. The scales look segmented, and you can kind of pluck them apart. The scales are larger than the Port Orford. It is an incense cedar. Number 39, uh, it looks like the California juniper, but we were able to identify that. We smell this. It has a more, it still has an aroma, but it is not pungent and it is not obnoxious. It smells more like a forest. That is um, cypress. So cypress and juniper are the ones that are hard to tell apart sometimes. Uh, cone, cypress has cones and the cones are round. Juniper has little blue berries. And if you touch the berries and roll them between your fingers, they're really, really sticky from sap. Okay, we have another big, large, aggressive looking cone here. It's kind of like the culture pine, but it's not. The, you can see that this cone is not as long, it's more round. The scales are not hooked or curled. However, they are still very aggressive. That is a gray pine. Number 41, uh, if you take number 41 and you grab it like this, you can feel that the, the tips of the needles are very sharp and they go all the way around the stem. Also about this species is that if you pluck off a needle or find an area where the needles fell off, it leaves these little stumps uh, and the stumps are really, they're about that long and it's kind of weird. You look at them and there's these little stumps and it's where there was a needle. The stumps and the fact that the needles are sharp makes it a spruce. Number 42, uh, the cone is closed. And the cone here at the base is very aggressive and toothed, kind of gnarly looking, uh, almost weapon-like. Uh, anyway, so that's a knob cone. Cool cone right there. Number 43, the last one. Um, this one, if you, the, the tips of the Needles are extraordinarily sharp. So, like, if you, have, if you are a coach and you have a student that misses this one twice, then you sneak up behind them and you, and you hit them on the neck like this, and it hurts because they're so sharp. And I guarantee you, if you are a coach, and your, your student will not miss that one again because it is very, very sharp. Okay, they will, they, these needles are so sharp, they will draw blood. Okay, and then uh, the other seven, we just gave you guys the points for that. Did I miss one? You didn't say oh, sorry. Yeah, that's um, nutmeg. Thanks. Are there any questions?